Thank you for tuning in to this new episode of Shelly's Game Kitchen. I'm so excited to have you here today and to get to introduce you to my very dear friend, Kathy Butts. Welcome <laughs> to the show. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. This is going to be fun. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, and you like to cook too. I do. And, and she's a very avid fly fisher woman. So this is one of those episodes that you really want to tune into and keep watching and uh, learn some new things about Montana as well as some fly fishing and we got some great story. We got a lot of history together. <laughs> we do. <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned while I bring the forest to your table. What I want to show you today is pheasant and wild rice soup. Oh. So Kathy and I got to know each other from my, my restaurant that I had for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so we became really good friends, but her and her husband, they would come in and have dinner. And one of the dishes that we would make was chicken and wild rice soup. Do you remember that? Awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. I loved it. <laughs> nice. Well, I started making this version and Brad actually loves it more. My husband, Brad, loves it more than the creamy version. So we're actually Ooh. doing a stock version. Ooh. And I have made my homemade elk stock. So some of those wild bones from, from the elk that Brad shot, mm -hmm. I roast them down and I make my own stock. Oh, so, it's gonna be so good. <laughs> it is, there's so much flavor in all of these layers. But uh, I know when, when I invited Kathy on the show, I said, you know, we, we might have some fun and don't make me go Beth Dutton on you. <laughs> And you did it. <laughs> <laughs> had to, had to, because we are going to have to deglaze with some white wine, but why not have it in our, don't make me go Beth Dutton on your glass. <laughs> so as I'm going to get going here, I'm going to start doing a little bit of prep. But Kathy, you are a very prolific realtor and very accomplished realtor here in the Bitterit Valley. Would you tell, tell my viewers and, and explain to them a little bit more about where you work and how it all works um, and how you find properties for people like myself. She's my realtor as well. Yeah, I'd be happy to. You're a realtor. <laughs> you're, you're a realtor. Yes. <laughs> so real estate in Montana is a combination of understanding houses and understanding construction, understanding mother nature, being willing to drive Yes, oh my goodness, right? Out into the woods with your snowshoes and your boots to go show property. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's, it's amazing, the places I've been and the times of year I've been there, it's really cool. I used to be a respiratory therapist and this real estate job is way more fun. <laughs> and definitely, right? Definitely. You get to show people fun things. Fun things and I like to have fun, that's kind of my middle name. And so it just, being a realtor here is awesome. I typically do a pretty good job of finding things that are not on the market. Oh, that's a good thing to know. Especially in this market, because the way things are moving and the prices oh, things man. are at. So Definitely. You, you have to have lived here for a long time and know a lot of people to be able to figure out what's on the market <laughs> or what's available that's not on the market and then find a way to get your buyer to it. That's very true. What what company do you work for? Like, how can people get a hold of you? Oh, I work for Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Montana Properties, in the Hamilton office. And my phone number is the easiest way to get a hold of me. You can text me or call me. It's 406-363-8114. Nice. Well, yeah. and we're one of the only states that still only has one area code. Correct. It's the entire state is 406. So mm -hmm. if somebody's calling you from 406, it could be across the entire state and we're the second largest state mm -hmm. in the union. Yep. Correct? Correct. So I think Texas. So April 6th is a day of <laughs> holiday in Montana, yeah. 406. Yeah, April 6th is the, <laughs> is the 406 day and Montana day. Mm -hmm. So wonderful. Uh, what I've done here is just kind of diced up my pheasant. And this is wild pheasant that uh, my husband got and harvested, um, but it actually went to North Dakota <clears throat> to get this because pheasant is a prairie type of bird but they're wonderful. I love to use them, but it's a dark meat, so it's a little bit richer than like it's white chicken or whatnot, pretty. but leaner. It's so much leaner than chicken and so much leaner than even dark meat. 
or white meat chicken or turkey. So I love to use pheasant anytime I can. And it's easily, it's versatile. You can swap it out with chicken and, and just do cool. pheasant. So I'm just gonna season that up with some of my Montana Flavor to Savor seasoned salt. Cause this is wonderful on chicken, poultry, eggs. It's a versatile, versatile seasoning. So I've seasoned that up. I've already made some wild rice and I just, cook this in some stock because if you watch some of my other episodes I explained to viewers that whatever you're cooking you want the liquid to be flavorful so I do a lot of rice or pasta even and potatoes wonderful to cook in stock so I cooked the rice off already because it takes about 45 minutes yeah. so we don't have that long and I don't want to keep you on the <laughs> on that long but so I went ahead and cooked that off now we're gonna hop over to the stove and the cooktop and start cooking this up. So keep watching and we'll get cooking. So what we're gonna do here is I've got my big stock pot here and I'm just gonna add a little bit of that light olive oil to the bottom because I'm going to simmer off all of my aromatics and, and such. We're gonna start with the onion and get that sizzle in there. And I've got this really fun scoop spatula. It actually has measuring things in there too. So it's really handy. I like it. So I just want to kind of soften these. I'm not getting color. So I'll, I'll kind of fiddle with it more just to make sure that I'm just wanting to soften and, and release some of the flavors and the aromatics out of there. And then as soon as that happens, I'm going to add in some crushed garlic or minced garlic. Actually, let me do my celery first. Perfect. And if it looks like it's getting too dry, go ahead and add a little bit more oil. You don't want to create um, something that's going to stick or burn. So manage your heat. And then just kind of, we want to get those beautiful aromatics started and soften them up just enough. We're releasing flavor, building layers of flavor. So that's good there. And now I'm gonna add my garlic. Perfect. Just give that like 30 seconds to maybe 60 seconds. As soon as you smell it, you're ready for the next stage. Yum. Okay, now I'm gonna add that seasoned uh, diced pheasant. And what we're gonna do is again, we're just gonna brown this. And it's not really heavy brown, it's just, we're just starting to kind of get a little bit of caramelization on the outside, but it's not a heavy brown. Because this is a soup. We're making pheasant wild rice soup. So I'm gonna let that go, set it and forget it for a second there. And then we'll come back in and I'll add some, we'll deglaze it with that wine out of my favorite glass. And then we'll add some of the stock. The last thing that we're gonna do is when we add the stock in is when we're gonna add in kind of the soup elements. This is developing flavor. So your aromatics with your onion and your celery and your garlic is about developing that flavor so and, and the seasonings and so forth now I want to let that kind of sit for a second like I said stirred that in when we go in and we add in our stock and remember me telling you you know it's stock if it jiggles this is the real deal stock which is made with bones because you get that collagen a real homemade stock or a real stock will jiggle it will have that movement or that uh, collagen buildup in there. That is a natural thickener. So that just helps to where you don't need to add so much roux or flour or cornstarch or whatnot. This is one of those natural thickeners. All right, perfect. Now, I get some nice little brown bits. It's not done. I'm not trying to have the, the pheasant done done. But now what I'm gonna go in is with my fabulous glass is I'm gonna deglaze this pan and just not quite cover, 
with the wine. So you just never know how much you need. You're gonna have to actually get some more wine <laughs> for me to drink, not for the soup. But you won't know exactly how much you need until you see all of your ingredients in there. So you can approximate a cup, you can approximate this, but this is how we made the soup at the restaurant. I mean, we made homemade soup every single day. So we always would get the aromatics in there and kind of sear off the meat and then deglaze with the wine and let that completely reduce by half. So this is going to come up to a boil and we're gonna reduce it by half. I'm gonna now add in some of my herb seasoning. Because these are dry herbs, you wanna add those in at the beginning. You finish with fresh herbs, but dry herbs, they are more potent than fresh herbs. So you actually wanna add these in earlier to give them time to bloom. So I'm just gonna dust some of my Montana Flavor to Savor herb seasoning in there. And then I'm gonna let that simmer and reduce. After it's reduced down enough, by half, then I'll come in and I'll add the stock. Again, bring it back up to a boil. Once we reach that point, we're gonna add the raw carrots in. And then once that simmers, the soup will be done as soon as the carrots are done. So keep watching and we'll get this finished. So I know you can smell this soup. Oh, it smells so good and it looks so good. Yes, so what I did is the, the carrots were the last thing to go in and we got those nice and softened. And now I'm gonna put my cooked wild rice in and that will help us actually to get a little bit thicker, but also help to bring the temperature down on your soup oh, because it. you never want to, your taste buds, you don't want to eat something really, really hot because you can't taste it. Right. So you really want to have it be able to relax for a little bit and come down in temperature, but it's room temperature cooked rice. I just put that in there. That's going to help with that, but it's also going to warm up that wild rice as well. So while this is kind of before I get ready to plate this all out, mm -hmm. so I know that there's a very world famous addendum to a certain <laughs> particular real estate transaction that you did. It was your transaction. <laughs> <laughs> I love being world famous. I like going through the entire office and they're all talking about this addendum, addendum. once in a lifetime. The yellow belly marmot addendum. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, oh, we had fun with that one. Yeah. And we had to use it. Yeah. And, and it worked. <laughs> That's yes. the best part. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit of a funny story, but a long story. We won't go into it. If you reach out to me on social media, I'll, uh, I'll explain the story. <laughs> hey, what, it is. what happens if you don't layer all your flavors? Ooh. What happens if you just dump it all in there and turn the pot on? Okay. The lazy man way of cooking, just dump Correct. it in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what happens then is it's bland from when you bite into your meat, when you bite into your onion, when you bite into your carrot, you want that to be flavorful. So when you season every layer and every step of cooking, you build those flavors from the get-go. So every bite, like if you ever bit into like a taco and the meat, was just bland because all the seasoning was on the top. It wasn't actually in the meat as it Got cooked. It. Got it. So you're really developing all of that. But it's an excellent mm -hmm. question because that everybody has a tendency to do that or, or want to do that when you're in a hurry. But it, the flavor at the end will hinder. And then you'll have to add a ton more salt and a ton more other oh, spices it, at it. the end. Mm -hmm. Whereas this way, you know, I tasted this for seasoning and I'm really happy with that. I maybe added another half of a teaspoon of salt. But because mm -hmm. I've layered all of those flavors from the beginning, you need less salt at the end. That's good so, to know. Yeah, it's a great question, mm -hmm. you know, really. Mm -hmm. So let me just ladle up some of this soup here. I want to get all good bites and broth and wild oh, rice and awesome. pheasant. 
There's a pheasant by our house. <laughs> Is Maybe there? I'll find him. <laughs> <laughs> so, while I'm doing this, I also want to know, is there anything, you, you get one question from everybody, right? Mm -hmm. that, that comes to Montana or the Bitterette mm -hmm. and want to look at property. What's the one question that everybody wants to know? And it doesn't have to be, where does Rip stay? Yeah, well, that <laughs> actually is one of them. <laughs> Rip, the character from Yellowstone. They filmed yeah. that just a mile away from my house here, so yeah, it's a very is, local that thing. That is one of them. <laughs> How many of the Yellowstone guys do you know? Oh gosh, but, I get that all the time. Have you cooked mm -hmm. for any of them yet? Mm-hmm. I can't but, talk about my clients. <laughs> but almost everybody asks about fishing. Okay. Almost everybody asks if it's, I mean, they just, it's such a magical place that they don't believe that it's really true for a long time. And it's really true. It's really magical. Yeah. It, how fun to sell magic, right? Right? Oh, yeah, exactly. Love it. Well, and that's, I, I was blessed to be able to grow up here. I know a lot of the places to go. I know where, you know, the best property locations are. But you've really become very adept at, at, at and, and knowledgeable in all of that. Mm -hmm. You know the best places to go, the best properties, and that's why you're like the top realtor in the valley. One of them. Well, so, and I don't. You're my tell, favorite. Thank you. <laughs> I don't tell anybody where the huckleberries are. <laughs> Perfect. I know. Yeah, those are secret, secret locations spots. as well mm -hmm. as you know mushroom, the morel mushroom locations, uh -huh. oh. the huckleberry spot locations. They're very local mm -hmm. secrets, coveted. And w wild strawberry locations. Oh yeah, those are good too. Yeah. So <laughs> awesome. Let's take a taste. Tell me what you think. All right. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mmm. I'm drooling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. Is it? Mm hmm. Oh, Shelly. Well, I knew it was going to be great, but it's great, great. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad. Well, and, and the ones that you remember from the restaurant was a cream based, so mm -hmm. really heavy. Mm -hmm. and Very uh, different, but this is really good. This is better. Nice. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Lovely. Brad was right. Yep. <laughs> so perfect. I mm -hmm. want to uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been uh -oh. so fun. Thanks for having me. This yeah. has been fun. So cheers, my friend. Cheers. And my Beth Dutton, don't make me go Beth Dutton on you. So cheers to that. I got that. a plain one. I can be anything. <laughs> <Cheers>. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for tuning into this episode of Shelly's Game Kitchen with my dear friend and excellent realtor in the Bitterit Valley, Kathy Butts Thank with you. Berkshire Hathaway Home Services in Montana. Reach out to her and follow us on social media. And it's Kathy with a K. And IE at the end. There you go. Mm -hmm. And real butts, only plural. <laughs> <laughs> this has been so fun to have it you has on. Been fun. Tune into my next episode while I continue to bring the forest to your table. This episode of Shelly's Game Kitchen was brought to you by Kathy Butts Realty of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Montana, Hamilton office.